Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss one of the potential resolutions for a somewhat unusual biological mystery that puzzled scientists for hundreds of years. The puzzle in regards to the origins of life. Although to be more specific, the puzzle in regards to the origins of life on the surface of the planet as opposed to in the ocean. With the question being, why is it that it actually took billions of years for life to establish itself on the surface while it actually existed for almost 4 billion years in the oceans. And why is it that it took so long for life to diversify and become super complex, only establishing itself on land in the last 450 million years, which is really only like 10% of the lifetime of planet Earth. And that's despite the fact that relatively complex cells, such as for example cyanobacteria cells, existed for almost 3 billion years in the oceans. Yet based on all of the fossil evidence, we know that there was nothing going on on land prior to the era known as the Cambrian. And in the last few decades, there's obviously been quite a few attempts to try to explain this and quite a few explanations. With the one explanation that seems to be mostly accepted now not really being very satisfactory. Mostly because it actually just states that this is some kind of an intrinsic property of life and it just takes a really long time for complex life to develop and to conquer the surface of the planet. In this case, for planet Earth, it took almost 4 billion years. But the thing is, there is really no evidence for this assumption, or I guess no evidence that life requires any time to evolve, because the evidence we have suggests that evolution seems to happen in leaps and jumps, such as for example during Cambrian. The life actually evolved super quickly, diversified very quickly as well, and managed to go from relatively simple life to very complex life in just a few million years in the process also beginning the conquest of land. And so something in this explanation basically just doesn't add up, which is essentially the reason for this new study by Jin Jun Lu and his team. And here the focus is on trying to explain this using actual physical evidence and the idea behind iodine, specifically iodine cycle, that's actually one of the cycles on the planet we don't really know as much about. But there is something we've discovered about iodine in the last few years that potentially serves as an answer to many of these mysteries. Iodine is surprisingly similar to the famous, or I guess infamous, CFCs when it comes to ozone depletion. And so in the last few years we've had quite a few studies analyzing and discovering the effects of iodine on the destruction of ozone layer. And it actually seems to come from a lot of different locations, many of which are entirely natural and are extremely difficult to control. But today we know that it seems to have quite a dramatic effect on the ozone and substantially increases the hole size pretty much every year. And in this case, the destruction of ozone seems to be very similar to how it's usually done by the CFCs, the chlorofluorocarbons. Here, as a result of photolysis or the destruction of the molecules by solar radiation, Various reactive molecules are released into the upper atmosphere, and in this case into the stratosphere, which then serves as a catalyst in destroying ozone in a relatively short time. Now in the CFC molecule, the atom responsible for everything is chlorine, but turns out that iodine pretty much does the same thing. And so quite a lot of iodine-driven cycles seem to be also responsible for the ozone depletion, and surprisingly in some cases can even destroy ozone faster than chlorine. But intriguingly, the overall emission of iodine today is not really that dramatic. As a matter of fact, it seems to be absorbed by a lot of stuff in the oceans and also by the soil itself, and so the contribution to the ozone depletion, at least for now, is manageable and not really a concern. But the researchers behind the study realized that it might have been not always the case if we go back in time. Because it looks like billions of years ago, the absorption levels of iodine were much, much lower suggesting much higher levels of iodine in the atmosphere. And so in a nutshell, the main explanation in this study involves iodine cycle. And so in essence, the explanation for why life on Earth took so long to actually establish itself on the surface involves this iodine cycle that might have been very, very different for billions of years. And so in this case, by conducting a relatively thorough geological analysis and by focusing on different lines of evidence and different sources, the team was able to reconstruct a kind of an iodine dynamic for early Earth, showing that back in the days, for billions of years, the atmospheric iodine was really high and the absorption of iodine in the oceans and on Earth was relatively low. And that basically suggested one thing. Even though there was a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere, there was also quite a lot of inorganic iodine mixing and interacting with everything. And the much higher levels of marine iodine, which actually results in the production of an iodine salt, 
allowed it to travel in the upper atmosphere, reaching the stratosphere, and basically interacting with any attempts to create ozone. Here the evidence suggests that this unusual salt was quite prevalent in the early history, and the emissions of this inorganic iodine extremely likely disrupted ozone formation, with the additional simulations and photochemical calculations suggesting that even a relatively small increase in these inorganic marine iodides would very likely result in a complete depletion of ozone much, much faster than it would happen through the production of CFCs. And so the conclusion here is that for approximately two and a half billion years, it was almost like some kind of a battle. A battle between oxygen and iodine, with the iodine constantly winning and preventing the formation of an ozone layer, even though there was quite a lot of oxygen. And that's even despite the fact that during some periods, there was actually quite a lot of oxygen and the atmosphere should have been enriched in ozone very quickly. But the iodine would constantly destroy it, which would cover the surface of the planet in relatively powerful UV radiation that gave life on Earth no chance to survive. And technically, by being a catalyst, iodine should have been really successful at destroying all of the ozone even to this day. Yet something happened. And that's, I guess, the mystery. Approximately 500 million years ago, for some reason, the atmospheric ozone suddenly stabilized, and during the Phanerozoic period, that's when life suddenly started to become more complex and eventually started to conquer land. Now, it's obviously not clear exactly why this happened and what exactly happened, but I guess here we can make some speculations. We know that iodine is also one of the heaviest elements that's technically required by a lot of living systems. As a matter of fact, after tungsten, it's the second heaviest element required for life. But for a lot of primitive life, it could technically be replaced by something else. Yet for complex life, like for example, for any vertebrates, it is absolutely critical in the functioning of a lot of systems, specifically endocrine system. The messenger system involving hormones that very likely evolved approximately 450 million years ago. And according to modern biological studies, some of the early thyroid hormones, the ones involving iodine, seem to have evolved in these little guys known as urbilatarians, with all of the animals that evolved from them basically requiring iodine for something. Likewise, many other organisms, such as various types of algae, including the famous kelp, developed an ability to store a lot of iodide, and in many cases for unknown reasons. Intriguingly, kelp also evolved around the same time, approximately 450 million years ago. And so one potential resolution here is that, as the life started to evolve in the oceans, and as it absorbed some of the iodine that would have formed some of the salts and escaped into the atmosphere, it essentially allowed oxygen to proliferate and to suddenly become dominant in the upper atmosphere. And this might have resulted in the production of ozone, which eventually created conditions where life could now establish itself on the surface. And so in some sense, maybe it was actually life that helped itself after all. By evolving the ability to absorb and require a lot of iodine, it dropped the amount of iodine in the atmosphere just enough to allow the development of ozone. But this is of course just one of the potential explanations and just an assumption, and right now there's really no evidence for this either. Because the only evidence we seem to have is geological and does actually suggest that iodine levels, at least in the atmosphere, decreased approximately 500 million years ago. And the thing is, if this study is correct, it finally settles one of the major mysteries. The mystery for why life could not establish itself on the surface for such a long time, and more importantly confirming that it's really not the length in this case that's important, or basically even though it was billions of years, it could have technically happened much earlier, but the actual answer seems to be chemical after all, and specifically in regards to ozone. It seems to be the ozone layer that prevented the formation of more complex surface life, and once ozone became permanent and established, it started to protect the planet for millions and millions of years, transforming the planet as we know it today. And so in this case, this origin and diversification of complex life may really be the result of an unusual chemical battle that was going on for billions of years and was finally won by oxygen and eventually ozone roughly around 500 million years ago. Naturally, this is just the first such study though, so it will probably take time to establish if this is correct or not, and more importantly, to answer the question of, okay, so what exactly decreased the iodine, and why did the ozone form 500 million years ago and not before that? And so until we learn something else, or until future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.